Today's presentation is the Title IV Part A Special Data Collection for Public Reporting for the 22-23 school year and 23 through 24 school data. This presentation is intended solely to provide general information and guidance to Texas ESCs, LEAs, and participating private schools and reflects the Texas Education Agency's current understanding of statute and applicable federal guidance. The content of this presentation is subject to change as a result of further potential information and guidance provided by federal agencies with regulatory oversight of these programs. This presentation does not constitute legal advice, and entities are, therefore, advised to seek legal counsel regarding the information and guidance provided in this presentation before acting on such information and guidance. As you can see, this is the agenda for the presentation. The purpose of LEA public reporting requirements, read funding transferability options, review of the LEA work app instructions, data requirements, and submission requirements, as well as LEA considerations and their next steps, provide information on the support for assistance and resources. The purpose of LEA reporting requirements. The Title IV Part A program intent and purpose is to improve the academic achievement of all students by increasing the capacity of LEA schools and communities to provide all students with access to a well-rounded education, improve the school conditions for student learning, and also improve technology to enhance academic outcomes and digital literacy of all students. The importance of public reporting is that it meets the federal requirements and promotes accountability. It also guides the LEA and stakeholder priorities in decision making. In addition, one of the most important things that public reporting does is actually inform the decision makers and the public. It complements formal evaluation efforts as well. The public reporting for the state and TEA requirements are, TEA is required to publicly report how an LEA's Title IV Part A funds are being expended per content areas by federal fiscal year. And also the degree to which LEAs have made progress toward meeting the Title IV Part A objectives and outcomes. An LEA is required to annually provide a description of the Title IV Part A activities, programs, objectives, and intended outcomes. A description of how the LEA will periodically evaluate the effectiveness of the Title IV Part A activities and programs. And the LEA must assure that it will annually report how funds are being used to meet the Title IV Part A content areas. In the past, the TEA practices were to report the expenditures by service and content areas of LEAs through the PR 3107. The TEA also provided public reporting by the school year, which was a 15 month reporting cycle versus the federal fiscal year, which is a 27 month reporting cycle. Here you can see what is in the PR 3107 Compliance Report Part 3. Here is where TEA used to collect the expenditures and use of funds. We are no longer collecting that information in that format on the Compliance Report. USD's requirement is uh, the guidance request data to be reported by federal fiscal year. PR 
period of performance, which is July 1 through the following September 30th, and that is a 27-month reporting cycle. TEA practices prior to 21 to 22 and earlier, the LEAs maintain the documentation locally. And the documentation that was required to be maintained locally were the description of the activities, objectives, and intended outcomes, and a description of how the LEA would periodically evaluate the effectiveness of the Title IV Part A programs and activities, and also how the LEA made progress toward meeting those program objectives and measurable outcomes. In the past, that is what was collected uh, or the, what was requested to be maintained locally. TA is currently not publicly reporting on the degree to which LEAs have made progress toward meeting the program objectives and measurable outcomes. The new requirements from USDE is that all states must publicly report the degree to which LEAs have made progress toward meeting the program objectives and measurable outcomes. And so starting in 22-23 and moving forward, the type of Title IV Part A data that LEAs must report are the content service content, service, and content areas, the current year expenditures, and any carryover expenditures for the, from the prior grant year. The LEA will also report on its annual progress toward meeting the program objectives and measurable outcomes that it set forth for its district. And that information would be reported on a 27-month cycle as requested by the U.S. Department of Ed. REAP Funding Transferability Options. This is the LEA contact information section located within the work app. All LEAs receiving a Title IV Part A subgrant must complete the contact information section, regardless of allocation amount and even if the LEA is reaping or transferring 100% of Title IV, they must complete this section the LEA program contact name, and email address, and phone number. The LEA REAP and Funding Transferability Options screen asks that the LEA redirect 100% of its Title IV funds under Funding Transferability or the REAP program. If yes, the LEA would enter enter yes, but if the LEA did not use the REAP or funding transferability option for 100% of the Title IV funds, then it would select no and continue with the work app instructions. There is a certification statement agreement that all districts must complete, even if they are 100% REAP and funding transferability districts for the Title IV program. And so the district must review the certification statement, signify yes, they have read and they understand and are submitting the agreement with the certification statement above, and then click on the save link. Once the district has clicked save, then the, the districts that are reaping or transferring 100% have completed the work app request. Review LEA work app instructions. L the LEA prior LEA's priority reviews should be to first look at the TEA Title IV Part A webpage look at the information that's there that provides information about the program requirements and information that is needed to submit information on the work app. The work app submission instructions and the handbook is there in order for an LEA to review what is needed in the work app. There's also 
work app resources and statewide training resources that are reviewing and discussing the work app submission and what a district needs to do for Title IV Part A submission. There's the LEA Special Data Collection Handbook for Federal Fiscal Year 2023, which is the July 2023 through September 2025 federal fiscal year that an LEA must submit data. The submission cycle will be October 1st through 2023 through December 1st, 2023. Again, all LEAs are going to complete the contact information in the work app. Required fields for the work app submission are the program contact name, email, phone, REAP funding transferability option, and the certification agreement. There are additional fields in the work app that LEAs must also complete. There are no work app data field validations for objectives and measurable outcomes one and two, the expenditures, the progress met or not met, and the LEA comments. So it's very important for an LEA to ensure it has completed all fields before submitting because the work app will not state that you did not complete the OMO number two. So ensure that you're following the work app directions. All LEAs must submit the Title IV Part A data by December 1, 2023. And there are three pieces of data that must be submitted by that date. First, the 22-23 initial progress for the two Title IV Part A program objectives and measurable outcomes that were previously submitted in March of 2023. The districts will also submit expenditures for 22-23 by service and content area. Now that may be the initial expenditures that the district has submitted so far, that the district has used so far, and if there's going to be carryover from 22-23, that carryover is not posted within that particular work app. You're only going to report the total expenditures that were spent for 22-23 at the point in time, time of December 1st, 2023. In addition, the LEA must submit 23-24 Title IV Part A Objectives and Measurable Outcomes or OMOs for the current year. And the district will submit two of those. LEAs using the REAP or funding transferability options to redirect 100% of their Title IV funds are still required to submit minimal data in the Work App Smart Sheet, which I discussed earlier in this presentation. Title IV Part A data submission requirements for 22-23 and 23-24. Now I'll discuss the 22-20 reporting data. As you can see on the screen, this is a screenshot of what you would see when you open the work app. You need to click on the federal fiscal year 2022. Within there, you're looking at the grant funds for July 2022 through September 30th, 2023. And at that point, you've already established the Title IV measurable objective, objectives and measurable outcomes, the Title IV special collection phased in um, at the beginning of 2023, and you reported the two Title IV objectives and measurable outcomes. And then the district should monitor objectives and measurable outcomes locally. The special collection during October through December of 2023 is when the district is required to report the initial progress to TEA on two objectives and the measurable outcomes that they listed 
in early 2023. When it comes to the carryover funds for this same year, they're going to monitor objectives and measurable outcomes locally. And for the carryover for the 23, uh, during the 23 through September 2024 year, the district will submit final progress on the two objectives and measurable outcomes in October through December of 2024. All of this is for the 2022 through 2023 Title IV Part A fund. And so here's an example of what a district will see when they open their 2022 federal fiscal year data. They will see the pre-populated OMOs that were submitted by the LEA during the phase in submission in early March of 2023. You, you will see the content area in which the OMO is, is aligned to and any comments that the district had entered. An LEA may edit 22-23 OMOs or the content areas only if necessary during the open submission cycle of October through December of 2023. An LEA's incomplete OMO section looks such as this. In this particular instance, the district did not redirect 100% of its title funds for funding transferability or REAP, so it is using the funds. This district just wrote outcomes were met 100%. It did not address the 22-23 OMO number one requirement, and so the LEA may edit if this is something similar that they wrote. They need to edit that, that uh, comment and be able to write the information about OMOs and ensure that it is meeting those content areas. So again, we're looking at 2223. The progress reporting options for initial and final step is number one, no measurable progress was made to meet the program objective and measurable outcome. That is zero to 25 percent. Some measurable progress was made 26 to 49 percent. Substantial progress was made 50 to 99 percent or outcomes were met 100 percent. And so this is how the district would indicate if it met the progress or not for meeting those objectives and measurable outcomes. The district decides how they are actually measuring that progress when they submitted their initial OMOs in uh, March of 2023. And so when you see the screen, this is an example for OMO2, the initial progress reporting. As you can see, there are the four measurements and the district will select, did they meet the OMO that they listed for uh, number two? Did they meet that initial progress or not? They will indicate that. And if all 22-23 funds were expended and there's no carryover, the submitted initial progress also serves as the final progress for the 22-23 funds and OMOs that were submitted. TEA will publicly report for each LEA two program objectives and measurable outcomes and the progress made. If funds were not carried over, the initial progress will be reported. If funds were carried over, the final progress will be reported. And that report will be published on the TEA Title IV Part A webpage by January 30th of 2025. So for the 22-23 funds, again, you're, you're monitoring those current year expenditures locally. And for the special collection that is due October 23rd through December of 2023, you're going to report those current expenditures by service area or content area. 
if the LEA expended all funds during that current grant year, you're going to say yes. And then those expenditures are the final expenditures for the 22-23 school year. However, if there are carrier that is not the final. So if it's carryover funds for 22-23, those funds will be carried over to be used in the 23-24 school year. And so the LEA will need to report by expenditures on expenditures by service and content area during the carryover period. And so as you can see, the carryover period to submit those expenditures from 22-23 will not occur until October 2024 through December 2024 in the work app. At that time, you will report any carryover expenditures that you had from 22-23 by service and content areas. And so here's an example of the screen that you would see on the Title IV um, Part A expenditures by content and service area. As you can see, and as a reminder, there is a 2% limit on administration for Title IV Part A. And that is direct administration. And then the district will indicate how much funding was spent for each of the three content areas if it's required to uh, report on all three content areas. And then it will see what the total expenditures were that were reported were. So in this example, uh, you can see it's $1.8 million. That is the final amount and reallocation amounts total for 22-23. And the expenditures reported should not exceed the Title IV entitlement amount. There are districts that are exceeding that amount because they have included the prior year's carryover amount, 21-22. In this particular work app for 22-23 expenditures, you will not include carryover funds and when you're reporting for the 22-23 school year. This is a reminder that the expenditures reported should only include those expenditures from the 22-23 final allocation plus the reallocation for 22-23. Those are the only expenditures that the LAA will submit. Once that information is uh, input, then the LEA needs to certify that the information is correct and save the um, data so that it will be submitted to TEA. Again, TEA will publicly report the aggregate statewide use of funds, expenditures by content and service area in July, January of 2025. Now we're going to turn and talk about, I'm going to share about the 23-24 reporting data. To submit 23-24 reporting data, the district will click on the 2023 fiscal year, which is July 1 of 2023 through September 30th, 2025 data and expenditures. So the district is going to establish those Title IV objectives and measurable outcomes and report two of the Title IV objectives and measurable outcomes for the district. Those objectives that are selected are district selected. If there are more than two, you only can report two in the work app. And during this time, the district is going to be monitoring their objectives and, and outcomes to see if they are working towards meeting the initial progress, which would be reported in October of 24 through December of 24. 
That is when the LEA will report the initial progress to TEA on those two objectives and measurable outcomes that were submitted the year before. The, the LEA will not report final progress on those two objectives unless it is the carryover, then the district would submit that information on October 2025 through December 2025, the final progress if there is carryover funds from 23-24. Here's an example of the LEA objective and measurable outcomes and content areas and LEA content comments boxes for OM01 and OM02. Again, the district must select which content area the objective and measurable outcome is most aligned to and enter that as the selected content area. The OMO OMO box will include the program objectives and the measurable outcomes in the same box. There are not separate boxes for objectives and separate boxes for measurable outcomes. So you'll put all of OMO's number one in that first box and then the OMO number two you'll put in the next objective and measurable outcome box. The district will certify and then submit. So the, the 23-24 progress, as I stated, will be reported later. That will be reported after a district has monitored the current Title IV Objectives and Measurable Outcomes for 23-24. They will be monitoring that and then they will report the initial initial progress in October of 23 through December of 23. That's when you're reporting those objectives and measurable outcomes. But the initial progress will not occur until the following year, which is October through December of 2024. If the LEA expended all funds during the current grant year, no title and no Title IV funds will be carried over into 24-25. The initial progress will be also the final progress. If um, when the when you're reporting that final progress or the initial progress. And the final, again, you're going to see the measurable progress. The district will measure it according to no measurable progress. Some substantial or outcomes were met. And the, the district will select one for each of those OMOs. And then the final progress will be made and submitted through the work app in October of 2025 through December of 2025. And as you can see here, when it comes to reporting the current year expenditures for 23-24, the district will not report the current year expenditures by service and content area until October through December of 2024. And then during that time, the district will be monitoring uh, to see if there is carryover expenditures locally, and they will be tracking the carryover expenditures separately. Carryover expenditures by service and content area will not be reported in the work app until October 2025 through December 2025. And then TEA will publicly report the 23-24 data for objectives and measurable outcomes for, per LEA in January of 2026. Here are some LEA considerations and next steps. It comes to the Title IV Part A data and ensuring that the district is 
making progress toward meeting those objectives and, pro and uh, measurable outcomes. First, the district should think about what type of self-assessment or process is in place to guide stakeholder discussions during the development of those program objectives and measurable outcomes because stakeholder discussions are required and there are specific stakeholders that must be involved in the decision making progress and providing input and suggestions prior to the district making uh, determination of what it would be what it will spend its funding on and what the objectives and measurable outcomes will be. Number two, does the LEA feel confident it could justify and sufficiently document its use of Title IV Part A funds for data supported program objectives and outcomes to TEA to the U.S. Department of Ed and auditors if they were selected for monitoring? Are there any district budgetary tracking and or program reporting adjustments needed to meet the federal requirements for submission of the LEA's TEA Title IV Part A special data collection. How is the LEA tracking progress on its Title IV Part A program objectives and measurable outcomes? And so the LEA should be looking at a tracking system. How are you ensuring that you can provide an answer on if it met progress or not for those objectives and measurable outcomes? And then lastly, and maybe most importantly, a district should think about how would the local and state news media look at the data? How would they look at the district selected program objectives and measurable outcomes? Would they view it as a positive note for that district or would it be looked at in a negative light? How would the district justify that it's using funding to best support Title IV allowable activities? There are various ways for a district to receive support for assistance. First, reviewing the handbook that is for the LEA Special Data Collection for public reporting. It has all the information you need on reporting data. It has a lot more details than this presentation. It also provides links for the district to know where to go for additional information to help report um, the information in the work app. Also, the TEA Title IV Part A webpage. On the webpage, you can see general resources. There are lots of information listed that can be a resource to districts as they prepare on how they will use Title IV funds for uh, supporting those students and staff for the year. And so we have the frequently asked questions. There's a Title IV Part A program guide. There's a use of funds one pager when districts always ask, can I use my funds for this? Uh, is this an allowable use of funds? First, look at the use of funds one pager because there are specific criteria that must be met in order to uh, ensure that a district is using Title IV funds in the proper uh, way. In addition, we also have the ESCs that are able to provide assistance to, to districts. Um, and as you can see, they have a list of the Title IV Part A training that they offer, and that is a requirement from TEA of their ESA Basic Services Initiative for Title IV. And then they also must provide technical assistance and support around the Title IV Part A program and also submit uh, dim disseminate information to LEAs regarding Title IV Part A. There are also uh, special resources that are related specifically to the data collection for public reporting. Not only do you have the handbook, but you also have uh, statewide training resources that you can go back to and view. And there's also training resources on how do I get uh, a new LEA contact listed in the work app? There's information on how to do that through the work app submission uh, link and instructions video and the instructions PowerPoint. 
So the, you can look at that and figure out how you can get someone listed, how you can get uh, di a district personnel removed if they are no longer with the district so that you can update that work app contact list. And then you also have access to several different training slides and voiced over PowerPoint videos. Thank you for attending, listening to this presentation. Have a wonderful day.